Hello viewers and welcome to the lesson Linear Motion and Velocity Time Graph. The question is here. A particle moving at 20 meters per second accelerates to 30 meters per second in 5 seconds then travel at this speed for 10 seconds before decelerating to rest in 4 seconds. Draw a velocity time graph and use it to calculate the distance covered by the particle in 19 seconds. 3 marks. Part B. A train 100 meter long traveling at 72 km per hour overtakes another train traveling in the same direction at 56 km per hour and passes it completely in 54 seconds. Find the length of the second train. 4 marks. Part 2. Find time how long they would have taken to pass each other if they had been traveling at these speeds in the opposite directions. 3 marks. So those are the questions. Let's go to the first part. Why are we supposed to draw a velocity time graph? So let us begin by drawing a velocity time graph. Just a, a sketch the graph. So that is the x and the y axis. And then we have time time in seconds here yeah. then on the y axis we have velocity in meters per second so this particle starts at 20 meters per second so we can decay 20 there then accelerates to 30 so accelerates to 30 and then maintains a uh, speed so we can I'll begin by sketching this so it is us from that point, then accelerates to 30. Then from 30, it goes at a constant speed. Um, so this is 5. First, we must indicate this. It accelerates to 30 meters per second in 5 seconds. So this is 0 to 5. So here we have 5 seconds. Then from 5, Travel at this speed for 10 seconds. So this is a 10 seconds, constant speed of 10 seconds. Let's say up to that point. Then afterwards, decelerate in 4 seconds. Deceleration is this uh, negative speed here. It reduces the speed uh, for 4 seconds. So from 5 to 10, this will be 15. Then 15 plus 4 seconds. The last one, it ends at... So that is how it moves. From 20, accelerates um, 5 seconds up to 30, then maintains 30 speed for 10 seconds, then decelerates. So that is the velocity time graph. We are supposed to calculate the distance covered by the particle in 19 seconds. So from 0 all the way to 19. So one important thing that you're supposed to know is that distance in a velocity time graph is obtained by calculating the area under the velocity time graph under the velocity time graph this is very important so when we get the area under this curve and this area enclosed by this graph that will give the total distance now we look at that shape and closed by this graph. Uh, it isn't a regular shape. So um, when you look at it, it's not a trapezium. So we can, the best thing we can do is to divide this uh, into three shapes, a regular shape. Like this is the first one, A. This is the second one, B. And the third one. So A, shape A, as you notice, shape A is here. Then B is the center here. Then C is here. So a is a trapezium. A is a trapezium. And how do you calculate the area of a trapezium? A uh half -huh. times the sum of the two parallel sides. Uh, as you can see here, this uh, side will be 30. And then this one will be 20. So the sum of the two parallel sides, A will be 20 plus 30. Then multiply by the height. The height will be 5, 0 to 5. That will be the height. So that will be the area of the first shape, that is A. 
and this will give uh, 25 times 5 will give 125 meters when you get the area we get this one in meter let's go to b b is a rectangle measuring from 5 to 15 that is 10 measuring 10 by then the height is 30 so this will give 300 meters then shape c shape c is um triangle the area of a triangle is given by half the base the base from 15 to 19 is 4 then times the height which is 30 so this gives uh, 60 meters so now when we add these the sum of this area of a plus b plus c to give the total distance covered by the particle in 19 seconds so add everything here and this will give um 485 meters so that is how we are required to get the distance covered by the particle in 19 seconds part b a train 100 meter long travels uh, traveling at uh, 72 kilometers per hour overtakes another train traveling the same direction is very important note this traveling the same direction and passes it completely in 54 seconds find the length of the second train so let me begin by this is um the train which is a hundred meter long Let's say this is a hundred meter long hundred meter long So there's a train so it overtakes so it travels until it overtakes it overtakes the second train so it overtakes the second train and we need to get the length of the second train so assuming that this is a um, the train that is 100 meters so this length here from here to this point will also be 100 meters so these are 100 meters as well so since they are traveling in the same direction so the one that is longer is the one that overtakes the other one so we need to get um the length of this train of course uh we're not sure of the length of this uh, train so we can just leave it like that so this one we can call this uh, train a this is a train a and this is train b so train a is a hundred meter long but of course uh, this distance i've added here this is the distance after overtaking that is the distance after overtaking so we need to get the whole of this distance we need to get the whole of this distance that is here the whole of this distance and how do we get that uh, after overtaking in 54 seconds um to get distance uh we're going to use uh, speed multiply by time and which speed are we going to use we shall use uh, the relative speed you can see these bodies are moving in the same direction so relative speed since they are moving in the same direction we get that by subtracting so we shall get 72 kilometers per hour uh, subtract 56 kilometers per hour so this will give uh, 16 kilometers per hour so that is the relative speed so therefore distance that it moved in 54 seconds uh, will be given by so distance is equals to uh, speed which is a uh, 16 kilometers per hour times uh, the time which is a uh, 54 seconds 54 seconds now when you look at this you notice that we can't work with uh, seconds and kilometers per hour we need to convert 16 kilometers per hour 16 kilometers per hour to meters per second and uh, that one we work it out by just dividing by 1000 multiply by 1000 divided by 
3600 and these are when you simplify these you get 5 over 18 since you need to convert kilometers to meters then the hours to seconds so, so to simply convert kilometers per hour to meters per second you just multiply the kilometers per hour that you're given by 5 over 18 so by that we have converted it to meters per second then now we can multiply by 54 seconds now what you're going to get here is distance in meters when you multiply this and we shall get this one as um this will give 16 times 5 over 18 times 54 this will give 240 meters these 240 meters so as you can see now we have been able to get this distance from here to this point so the whole of this distance after overtaking will be 240 meters so this is the other train the length of the second train this is the second train here the one that is being overtaken so to get the length of the second train we just need to take 240 240 meters then when we subtract uh, up to this point 100 we subtract 100 meters that is the length of the first train you can see definitely we will remain with um, the length of the second train and this will be 140 meters so that is how we're supposed to get the length of the second train since we've got all, all these distances 240 and you know uh, the length that is the distance of the first train that is 240 that is what you mean 240 is distance of the first train plus that distance after overtaking this distance x after overtaking the whole of that distance is what you got is 240 so to get the length of the second train which i've drawn the two of them here we just need to subtract 100 and you remain with 140. so that is how you work the, that part now the other part is a fine <coughs> the time how long they would have taken to pass each other if they had been traveling at this speed in opposite directions so in opposite direction now when the these bodies move in opposite direction and you're given the speed of the two as uh, 72 and 56 to get the relative speed that is the first thing to get a relative speed when bodies are moving in opposite direction we do add so we add 56 kilometers per hour plus 76 kilometers per hour and this will give um, 128 kilometers per hour if they're moving in the same direction to get relative speed you subtract now since we are getting time uh, which is the distance the distance already moved in 54 seconds we got that on as a 140 so the distance here uh, distance distance is uh, 240 meters that is the distance moved in 54 seconds we calculate that now if they were moving at the opposite direction for us to get um, the time um, they were taken to pass each other so time to pass each other will be given by distance distance divided by the relative speed relative speed so distance is already there 240 meters then divided by relative speed now when you look at the speed that is here the speed is in kilometers per hour then distance is meters so we convert 128 uh, 128 into meters per second i just told you we just multiply that by 5 over 18 so we can just uh, work it out like this uh, when you multiply when you multiply 128 by 5 divided by 18 you get 320 divided by 9 so now instead of writing um what we have here you can just uh, write this on 320 divided by 9 and this will give 240 uh divided by 320 over 9 and this will give 240 times 9 over 320 and this will give um 
multiply these uh, to 40. Remember, you're getting the answer in seconds. So this will give 6.75 seconds.